Chris, oil has taken a dive down to a penny a barrel, and it's dragging the stock market down today as we sit here. It's exciting. A penny, Dave. I, I don't recall that happening. I haven't gone back and looked at any historical data, but I am, I just emotionally don't recall that happening ever. And I think it's a good time to stop and use this as an example. A, it'll be fine. It's temporary. Why did it drive the, why does it drive the stock market down? Because it affects Exxon. It affects Mobile. It affects all the big oil stocks, and they're part of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So the market's down as we're sitting here right this second by 500 points and uh, losing a little bit of ground. It had regained as people started gaining confidence that someday this whole thing is going to be over with the coronavirus shutdown. But here's the lesson, folks. Oil is a commodity. Why has its price dropped? A commodity works like this. A simple In seventh grade, you should have been taught this, but some of you weren't. Mm-hmm. It's called a supply-demand curve. And when supply crosses demand, that's where price is established. And so it's, if you think of an X... One going one direction, one line going one direction, one line going the other direction. That's a standard supply demand curve. Now, what this sounds like is common sense if you think about it. If there is a huge oversupply of things, prices go down. If there's a shortage of things based on the demand, right. and that's the only way there would be an overage or a shortage, that's right. is based on demand, then prices go up. up. Yep. Okay. So why is oil down? Everyone's sitting at home. (laughs) Ta-da! You're not supposed to be out there driving your car. And so the largest consumer of gasoline in the world, the largest consumers of gasoline Mm -hmm. in the world, the developing countries, uh, or the developed countries, if we call them that, the United States of America, by far the largest, China the second, and the United States of America is sitting at home. Yeah. And so consumption is, you know, there's a huge oversupply. The old saying, you can't give it away. Right. And they're trying at a penny a barrel <laughs> yeah, to give really it away. Are. Now, translation is that should show up in gasoline prices after it's refined, after the oil is refined in uh, 30 to 90 days. You should see some of that happen. The oil prices also dove when Russia got in an argument about oil with Iran a few weeks ago. You guys remember that. It was in the news. It was way down below all the coronavirus panic stuff, but it was in the news. And what happened was is they couldn't come up. The cartel says we're going to control the spigot. We're going to control the supply, and we're always going to have enough of a shortage that we keep the price up there. So we turn the spigot down and don't let as much out, or we let a little more out. And we keep. They control the price with the supply based on worldwide demand. What they couldn't control was that worldwide demand came to a screeching halt, and Russia and Iran get in this little argument and decide to throw a bunch of oil on the market. So we've got double dips on extra supply supply on supply on supply on supply on supply and so it would be like if uh we overbuilt houses and there were houses sitting everywhere for sale and there were no buyers guess what house prices would do welcome to 2008 that's right they went down yes so commodities are homes are a little different but commodities like oil around the stock market uh this is why we tell you not to buy gold Okay, the the demand for it drives the price and not the actual oil doesn't actually create money. Mm -hmm. The barrel of oil doesn't. It eventually does once it turns into gasoline and or or an oil refined product of some kind. But the barrel of oil is traded based on supply and demand. Gold is traded based on supply and demand. And there's a higher demand when people are greedy or afraid for gold. And that's the only thing that drives gold prices versus a share of Dell or a share of McDonald's stock or a share of Home Depot stock or a a rental property actually creates money. Mm Mm-hmm. They actually create money. They're not a fixed item. but And so diamonds are a, gemstones are a fixed item. A supply shortage of those drives, the rarity of them drives right. the price up. Yeah. Well, I can remember in 07 through 09, the whole talk of gold. Okay, that that became, you know, people were, you know, I like, need to buy gold, I need to buy gold. I'm thinking, no, you don't. That, that's 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 a the value is is man given. There you go. You know, it's not math. It's not math. You could not roll into a grocery store with a gold nugget and get anything. 
Mm-mm. No. And so, Except you know, it's arrested. Yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting. I've never heard of oil being at almost zero. Yeah. That's that's that blows my mind. Yeah, it's probably going to take uh uh, some of the folks you work with on Fox Business, Maria and those guys, their heads are probably exploding oh, right now. Yeah, because it's a very unusual anomaly. But it has to do with the supply, extra supply. The spigot got turned on by Russia and Iran because they wouldn't observe the cartel's limitations. Mm-hmm. And um, the uh, uh, but they control the supply and demand. And so you know, and then everybody quit driving. So there's this huge oversupply of oil. It's everywhere. Versus a shortage of it would drive the price up. I mean, I've seen oil prices approach two hundred dollars a barrel, mm-hmm. and uh, now it's down to a penny. I mean, it usually hovers around a hundred or so, you know, in that range in the last few years, anyway. But oh my gosh, I mean, yeah. just supply, 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 supply. I wonder what else we're not using that there's a huge oversupply of or a shortage of that we are overusing right now. You know, I mean, the things that Americans are consuming because they're at home, right? the things they aren't consuming because they're at home, what else it's going to do? Because that that's really what this is. It's a supply-demand curve. The demand has either greatly increased or greatly diminished. It's greatly increased for delivering things to your home. Right. It's greatly diminished for eating in a restaurant. None of them are open. That's right. You know. And that's going to impact the restaurant market severely. And, you know, those that are out there that are smart enough, I talked to a few of them, Dave, that are plugged into our Entree Leadership, which is our leadership and business owner information at EntreeLeadership.com. But these restaurant owners have been smart. They've pivoted uh, Mm -hmm. where they can't have people eating in the restaurant, but they're delivering food Mm -hmm. to people that they can cook in their homes. And that's necessary. Several of my friends that own restaurants and our chefs and so forth are doing all kinds of stuff right now. Uh, pivoting to cause that to happen so that's what's happening with the market out there there's some other things in the news chris and i'll get to today uh a lot of the people having their stimulus payments scarfed up by debt collectors hmm Ooh. something we probably ought to talk about yeah in that i don't think that was the intention not of, at all uh, of the american taxpayer going another two trillion dollars into debt for the american taxpayer <laughs> I don't feel stimulated. No, I do not. I'm just not feeling stimulated. It's a problem. It's just a problem.